Oh, here's a very simple experiment you can do easily yourself that, when it was first done, changed our world forever, really, from then onwards. It was really a seminal moment in the history of our species. This is what Hans Christian Orsted discovered. In uh, 1800, we had a way to drive large currents due to Alexandra Volta's galvanic battery pile. With such a battery of a large enough size, Orsted's observations could not be seen. If the battery wasn't uh, you know, of a decent size, he wouldn't have made this uh, observation. The story handed down to us is that in 1820, Orsted was giving a lecture about electric currents using Volta's battery when he noticed that a compass needle, some say by pure chance this happened, moved as he moved it closer to the current carrying wire. So it, this wasn't a premeditated experiment, it was just an accident. Maybe he had a compass in his hand and he was there was an experiment going on with a very high current through a wire and he just happened to notice its movement. That's how the story is. Maybe that's not the story, but that's how it's come down to us. Then this began a series of experiments by him. Once he once he spotted this, he wasn't, you know, he was a very clever chap anyway in his own right and made some other major discoveries in physics. So he 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 uh, took hold of this observation and really really went with it. And uh, he then commenced a series of experiments. Uh, to investigate this further. By the end of it, he was able to show that our electric current produced a circular magnetic field as it flows through the wire. This discovery fueled a revolution in research into the investigations by many scientists in this area. In fact, one year later, in 1821, this was a year later after his discoveries, much, loads of people were getting into this now. It was like a major thing at the time. Quite extraordinary if you think before then, uh, the idea of electric currents moving anything was completely unknown because there wasn't any batteries that were powerful enough for a large enough current for that observation to have been made. And uh, he, he was obviously making experiments with large currents using these large voltaic cells and he was actually able to see this and, and, and actually realise what he was seeing. That was probably the point. Uh, he actually realised what there was something very unusual here so uh so then of course that that information went through the science community like wildfire you know michael faraday uh on hearing this began a series of historic experiments by and by 1832 he was able to discover all the all the uh, phenomena associated with electricity and magnetism i mean he he actually took uh, several uh, other scientists results who were also researching electricity and static uh, electricity and through all of this he was able to pin down the exact behavior of electromagnetic waves and well, well not electromagnetic waves but electromagnetism and how uh, electricity and magnetism affected each other so there is a pretty phenomenal set of experiments. Uh, roll on to 1865 and James Clerk Maxwell publishes a dynamical theory of the electromagnetic field which he, he used Faraday's and others empirical results and gave a full mathematical description of the interaction between electrical currents and magnets and in the process proved the existence of electromagnetic waves. Uh, these observations and early experiments gave human beings this discovery of all time in a full understanding we were given a full understanding of electrical and magnet magnetism uh, and how it behaves so um, it was a major major piece of work uh, so you know from Orsted initial discovery within just 45 years a whole field of investigation could be summed up from just by four very concise equations from then on, all of modern technology exploded. It was a monumental discovery and achievement by the human mind. Uh, this is the experiment that kick-started. So what I'm going to go and show you now is the experiment that kick-started this revolution, uh, which took us from steam power to the strange world of electricity and magnetism and its spooky action at a distance with just four, within just 45 years. Uh, this giving us a very deep understanding of the mechanism of its behaviour. So we now have a deep 
understanding of how electricity and magnetism behaves but why it behaves in this way we might never really find out so although uh, we've got a full and mathematical description of the interaction between magnetism and electricity why that interaction is there is not really fully understood so uh, many people assume that uh, although we have all the equations of electricity and magnetism that we we understand this uh, action at a distance. It's like uh, many people assume that we understand um, when Newton come up with his uh, laws of motion that, that there, there's an inverse square rule. I mean, we assume, well, many people will assume that we understand where this force comes from, but we don't really. All we, all we have is descriptions of the force which Newton gave us. And then here we are, you know, in the 1800s, with Faraday and Maxwell giving us a complete description of how the forces of electricity and magnetism work but again we don't know you know where these forces come from what we have is a very clear description of them and it's enabled us to uh, have all our modern technology everything really from the 1800s to, to today has been uh, you know a blink of an eye in terms of uh, time and yet it's been a monumental uh, progression of technology purely because of this initial discovery by Christian or uh, Hans Christian Ordsted which I'm just going to show you now I'm going to show you what he did and how he kick-started this uh, amazing set of discoveries okay what I'm going to do here is just uh, describe the setup I have to emulate Ordsted's experiment it's not going to use the uh, voltaic, voltaic battery that uh, Hans Christian Orsted used because uh, there's no point. What I'm going to use uh, is a power supply. Now, if I just show you the power supply, what's important if you're going to do this experiment with uh, using a power supply, what you need to do is I'll switch this on now and just explain to you what you need is a current limited um, power supply. So, because the reason being is you need a lot of current. To uh, to make this um, to make a, a magnet, I'm going to use this particular magnet here, compass rather. And uh, now you're going to need uh, a fair amount of current running through the wire to actually produce enough force to move this. Although it's a small piece of metal there, this is uh, at the moment uh, it's being affected by the Earth's magnetic field. Now that's got a force in itself, so we need enough current running through this wire to overcome the Earth's uh, magnetic field and uh, surprisingly it takes quite a lot of current to do that even um, even if we hold the magnet very close to the wire so this is another good reason why nobody actually discovered this until we had really powerful batteries that uh, Volta gave us in the 1800s you know uh, in my early experiment when I showed you the construction of a voltaic cell that was a really small um, battery and it was giving us, a, I can't remember what, what the current was, but it was a very small amount of current, a very small amount of voltage. Um, to actually get us to, to see anything, we're going to need at least uh, 600 uh, milliamps, uh, which is about uh, you know, just over half, half an amp. Um, now, when you do that, uh, you're pulling half an amp. Uh, and basically, I've got a short circuit here, so when I'm running half an amp through that, I've got to be very careful that I don't... Uh, damage the power supply and if you've got a current limited power supply you, you can you can do this uh, safely as long as you set uh, you set it so that it doesn't go over uh, a safe level in this case I make sure it doesn't go over 0.6 um, amps and this can handle that no problem so but if you haven't got a current limited uh, power supply then it's probably not a good idea to use a, a, your power supply for this experiment just get yourself a nice big 12 volt battery if you want to see it I and mean, a 12 volt battery will give you plenty of amperage and you'll you'll get more than what I'm going to show you here in fact but I don't want to mess about with a 12 volt battery I'm just going to use power supply it's easier so what I do is first of all I'm going to set things here if I show you you can see I'm moving up the voltage now. It doesn't matter how much I move the voltage up now. Uh, that's going to that's going to limit my current. So I could keep on increasing the voltage. So uh, I've limited the current now. If I move now, I've got it to eight. I don't want to go to eight. And 
Also what I'm going to do, now I've got that limited to, I don't know if you can see that, uh, maybe it's not, not showing on the, on the video here, but basically I've got that, um, I'm not sure if that's actually showing or not, but maybe not, but if it could show, if the brightness wasn't so bad, it would show 0.5, there's two uh, readings here, the top reading is the voltage and the bottom reading is the... Uh, the uh, current and what I did was I made sure that no matter where I moved my how high I moved my voltage the current was limited so uh, in that way you know I can't accidentally um, put too much current through it because what I want to do is 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 turn the voltage on and off very very fast and enable myself a constant current to fly to to to, to pass through the wire uh, and I don't want to leave it on too long. Obviously, I leave it on too long. These little wires here are going to get hot, and you know you could actually start. <laughs> they could actually get so hot that they could probably catch fire. So, so what I'm going to do is just give it pulses, and that's all you need. You only need pulses to see this moving. So uh, that's it, really. And all the circuit is is just it's just a, a short circuit. I mean, that is probably the most basic circuit you build, but it's not a good circuit, obviously, to build. I mean, you. You don't want to be building short circuits normally, but the, to actually illustrate this, um, that's what was going on when Orsted did his experiment. Basically, he had this set up. He had a large voltaic cell and a, a short circuit wire and a compass, and that's how he would demonstrate it to people. So uh, we're just going to do that now. I'm just going to put it up, and then if you notice, when I move the... Uh, I'll just move it down so we can see what's going on now. Um, and here's my compass. What I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to take a reading with the compass above the wire, and then I'll take another. At the moment, you can see it's not moving at all because I've got no current. It's just that's there pointing in the Earth's uh, magnetic field, and you can see that uh, the north here is the white, and it's uh, directed to my left. Uh, so you can see my house is. Uh, north south facing um so here we go we'll we'll stick up i'll hold it on the top first and this is uh the monumental discovery that kick-started the whole of electronics and the electronics industry everything really and this is this is what this is what did it back in 18 uh, uh back in 1820 here we go right nothing's happened there <laughs> Okay, I realised I really needed to get this uh, camera in a lot closer and also I had to increase the actual uh, uh, constant current on the power amp. I had to increase it to about 7 to make this work, so 0.7. So it's running uh, 0.7 of an amp here. Now, uh, when I uh, increase the voltage, you should see, see the needle move and if we take notice of the direction that it moves in, either it's moving uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise. So let's see if it's clockwise or anti-clockwise when the needle is above the uh, when the compass is above the wire so you can see the wires there so I'm gonna hold it and now I'm gonna right you can see here I'll turn it back off let it settle down again stop my hand from shaking if I can right now I'll do it again and let's note where the needle moves when I move up the voltage right so here we've seen it's moved that way. So it's moved uh, in a clockwise direction. Now, here's the important parts of the experiment that he did was to show um, that the direction was in the opposite. And if I move this up now, you'll see what happens where it moves now. Notice it's gone the other way. So now the needles move that way. So really, the fact that uh, the compass moved that way and this way and he also carried on doing a whole range of uh, experiments. Also, of course, you'll notice that uh, when I when the needle moves, it only moves about five or six degrees here. The reason it only moves a small amount is obviously uh, this magnet's got some leverage here, and uh, the more we uh, the more torque we're producing a torque as we turn it. So the more we try and turn it, the more force we need to overcome the the Earth's magnetic field. So the only way I'm going to get that to go completely hot, I mean, if I had enough current through the wire, this would go completely at 90 degrees to the wire, yeah? 
and that was where it would stay. And this is, and this is really what he discovered with a with a large battery. He was able to show, you know, by switching it on and putting an enormous current through it, he couldn't get the needle past this this position here. So he he realised that the needle that was the the maximum he could get the needle to swing. And when he moved it underneath, it was going the other way. Yeah. So then he realised that that's the direction of the force. So the force, and so if we went all the way round, obviously the force is going that way all the way round. So he was able to figure that out just by this setup, basically, with a lot more current than I'm using. So that's it. I mean, from there, everything happened after that. After that, uh, information would uh, uh, pass through the scientific community then everything took off from that point onwards. So that's the, the experiment. I wanted to start off a series of uh, lectures now on uh, electro uh, electricity and magnetism. We're going to go through everything, really, from electrostatics right through till Maxwell's uh, famous four equations. And uh, it all started with this experiment, so I thought it would be a good one to start it. Uh, and uh, so the next, next series of lectures are going to be on... Uh, everything that occurred during that time and uh, it's really quite um, fascinating so uh, stay tuned and I'll put up some of these lectures and you'll see what it's all about